Hey everyone, I'm Jack from River Jack Studio, and today we're going to make a coffee table from scratch. So this first bit of footage was actually shot two years ago when I worked as a land manager for my university while finishing up my undergrad degree. The property I worked at was about 2,000 acres. Uh, it was owned and operated by my college, and I spent most of my weekends out here killing invasives, planting trees, and in this case, prepping for prescribed burn we would do in the spring. I spent way too much time doing exactly this in the footage, sharpening chains, or fixing broken equipment. I would actually say 50% of my job wasn't even land management, but uh, just actually repairing equipment itself. It was a great job though. I got a lot of experience and it was great to be able to have a place to go out like this, um, especially at the end of a hard week of classes. So today the plan was just to fell a bunch of trees. Um, some of them were a little too close to the fire lines I had dissed up. But as maybe some of you have noticed in the footage, it's not gonna start off as smoothly as I think it will. I've got a flat tire and like in usual fashion, I didn't have a plug kit. So I had to run to Napa real quick and get one. Work never ever starts as smoothly as you think it will out here. I started to plug this one and all was going well and I stopped filming and as soon as I aired this tire up, I noticed another nail in the tire. Plug that one off camera real quick and uh, that's just how things go sometimes. So get to work at like eight. I think it's like 10 o'clock by now. So that's just how the day starts sometimes. Finally in gear though, and on our way to look for our cedar tree. So Fish and Wildlife are the agency that's directly involved with us on burns, and they usually send out a qualified burn boss, and I take him around, and he kind of writes up in the action plan detailing everything uh, from concerns or maybe some problematic things, and he kind of discusses them with me. And in this case, we had this uh, cedar tree that was a little too close to the fire line and uh, made us a little nervous, so we decided to go ahead and cut it down. So this is our tree, a eastern red cedar, uh, Juniperus virginiana, which is actually a juniper, not even a true cedar. Um, I go ahead and put on all my safety gear, and we'll get at it. So the saw we have is a steel 391, and that thing is heavy as all get out. Uh, I've used Husvarnas and steel stuff before, and I don't know if it's just my imagination or what, but I feel every time I use a steel, it weighs at least five pounds more than the Husky version. <laughs> I really do like the steel saws though. They're easy to work on and find parts for, and that's kind of the dealers we have around us for all steel suppliers, so. I end up kind of putting together this video first, and I go to my mom and I ask her what her opinion was on it. And we go through it and we watch it, and we get all the way to the end. And the first thing she says to me is, do you own any clothes that aren't stained? <laughs> and I had to watch the video all over again. And uh, no, I apparently don't own any clothes that aren't stained. So uh, <laughs> thanks, Mom. I appreciate you pointing that out. So I usually just do a conventional undercut on these cedars, and then I'll go through and back cut it to fell them. It's nothing too crazy. Um, I usually do about 10 to 12 of these in a day if we can get them done and cleared out of these fields. And like clockwork, timber. So this cedar wasn't too bad, actually. I think at diameter breast height, it was only something like 29 to 30 inches. And then it kind of blossomed out when you got towards the top there. But you can see the heartwood for the cedar is really pretty, actually. It's like this kind of pinkish purplish, and it kind of oxidizes, and it gets a little bit more bland. But... Uh, it is a really pretty wood, and I thought it would make really cool tables. One thing, uh, though, I wasn't really paying attention to my surroundings when I was limbing this thing up um, for a burn pile, and I absolutely nailed my camera tripod. <laughs> so I ended up cutting, I think, just over a dozen of those cookie slices, and I did them probably about two inches to three inches thick. And uh, I just load them up in the gator, and I go put them in my truck. So about a month after I cut down that tree, we started our first burn, and we did about 200 acres in total, I think. So prescribed fires, and this fire in general, is a tool kind of used to promote native grasslands and wildflowers, which uh, in turn supports a whole bunch of other animals in the habitat. Uh, when this was filmed, I had just turned 21 and got my red card certification, 
which is the minimum qualification to be on a burn. So kind of wild to walk around with a gas torch in your hand, lighting the environment on fire. It feels super legal, and the entire time I thought Smokey the Bear was going to jump out from a bush at any moment. So these pieces sat in my garage for about two years to lower the moisture content. When I first cut them out of the tree, they were around 40 or 45 percent, and uh, you'll see here in a second that they're sitting right at about 15 or 16 percent, which is a little high. Um, so this coffee table is actually for one of my friends, Hallie, who uh, just so happened to break her last coffee table by standing on it. And I thought it would be really interesting to make her a cedar coffee table, and I promised her I'd get her something, so I thought this would be a, a good enough project to use these pieces on. So since the moisture was a little high, I decided to go ahead and put it in this insulated box. I just went ahead and threw the pieces in, and I wanted them down somewhere below 10%. So I just zipped the box together and put a heat lamp on it, and left it for a couple days. After leaving them in there for three or so days, I checked the moisture, and it was right at 7.5 or 7.7% moisture. So it seemed to work out pretty well. I was actually pretty happy with it. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the four pieces that I had uh, dried and I'm going to go ahead and debark everything um, using a Cutsall power carving disc. Super useful actually. I've had this disc for like two years and it's been great. Uh, I've been super happy with it. have yet to replace it, which I've been super surprised by. Doing this video has been a really long time in the making. Like I said, it was over two years ago that I first started taking the footage for this video and letting the cedar pieces dry and everything. And uh, I, I think I was a little overconfident with my abilities. I uh, got all the footage together and then I kind of waited till the last second to download all the software for everything. And uh, I thought it would take me <laughs> just like two days to be able to do edit the video, do the audio, the thumbnails, any, any of the other software, and uh, two days went by, and I think we're on day five now, so it's definitely been a learning curve to get to this point. So I ended up doing those four pieces uh, to dry out, and uh, they were averaged about 26 to 27 inches across in diameter, and I just really thought that wasn't going to be big enough for a coffee table for Hallie. So I decided to take the best pieces from uh, each of the cedar cookies and uh, kind of just kind of put them together and see what I liked and what I thought maybe would work well for her and maybe something that she'd like. After I had kind of already selected the pieces I was going to use in the project, I needed to go ahead and pre-sand everything that the epoxy was going to touch. So basically, I was going to have these three separate pieces, and I would pour the epoxy in between and then kind of joint all the pieces together. So red cedar, especially out in these open fields, kind of develops this petal-like structure to the, the growth process. So you'll see that kind of comes out, comes around, and then goes back into itself. And the, uh, the tree rings actually follow that and go throughout the... Uh, cedar piece on that, that cookie slice, but it's a huge pain to go through and, and clean out all the crevices and all the areas. So I'm just going through with a uh, an awl basically and just kind of cleaning it out. I ended up counting all the growth rings and it came out to be just around 74 to 75 years old. Uh, most of the time, these large cedar trees are left in farm fields along fence lines or to mark rocky outcrops, so they can get to be a pretty big size. Um, I think the oldest cedar that I had ever cut down at the preserve was, I think, right at 134 or 135 years old, which is a pretty old tree, especially for something like an evergreen, like these eastern red cedars. One of the problems that I kept running into was how to sand in between these spaces of bark between the petals. Hand sanding just kind of seemed like it would take an eternity and I quickly gave up on that. 
So I came up with taking a old dull reciprocating saw blade and CA gluing uh, sandpaper to it. Uh, and it worked out pretty well, honestly. Um, I could just go up to my grits and just keep on gluing more on there and rip them off and it would work out. But see, I just broke off that piece. Um, the other great thing about CA glue is that I can just go ahead and zip it right back on there. And since the epoxy is going to between all those spaces, it would just be a temporary hold anyway, and then the epoxy would actually bond to it and hold it. Those cuts all discs do leave pretty deep gouges though when you use them, so I had to start off with 60 grit sandpaper and I'd work up to 80 and then to 120. And that seemed to take out all the indentions pretty well. And this didn't have to be perfect anyway since this is where the epoxy is going. Well, after I got everything sanded, I would move on to flattening one side of uh, my cedar pieces so it would sit flush to pour the epoxy in. Uh, I just made up a flattening jig, used a Bosch 2.5 horsepower router and a flattening bit, and taken about uh, an eighth inch off every pass. I then laid the pieces out and cocked the bottoms to prevent the epoxy from leaking out, and I let that sit for a couple days to completely dry out. I made sure to leave a decent amount of space between the pieces because I wanted both to make the table a little bit bigger, but also to be able to see some of the red heartwood the epoxy was going to bond to. I was trying to be careful not to let any of the pieces move around so I wouldn't smear any of the caulking and cause a leak later on. Clearly I wasn't being that careful, as you'll see later on. I then did the same idea for the end of the uh, channel, so when I poured the epoxy it went right out the end. I just used some offcuts with Tyvek tape to them and caulk around them and kind of seal off the ends and end up using some plastic cups as well. Cedar is also super porous. I mean, it soaks up finish like crazy, and I was a little nervous about the epoxy as well, so I made sure to go ahead and seal the epoxy areas that I was going to do um, just so it didn't soak through. I'm always amazed to see these massive river tables with gallons of epoxy used in them. They always seem to have more money in the epoxy than the wood, and I ended up just using under a half gallon of this stuff on my first pour. And I do mean first pour. I thought everything was going smooth and well and I had no leaks and then about an hour went by, turned off my camera and I came back and I had epoxy leaking everywhere. So tried to patch it up as best as I could and I ended up pouring I think another, I don't know, quarter gallon, a couple cups more epoxy into the table. So about three or four days went by, came back to it. Luckily, I had all that Tyvek tape. That stuff is so good about not letting epoxy bond to it. And I just came through and popped all the pieces off that I could, and it piece came right up. I have done a couple pieces similar to this before and had the exact same leaking problems. you think I would have learned my lesson and cocked around all the edges of the pieces too, but you'd be wrong. So I started to remove all the blocking and pieces used for the molding. Um, because I had tried to plug that leak, I had caulking and flex paste everywhere. So I just tried to clean as much of it off as possible. Well, I graduated college last year and got a job with the Kentucky Department for Environmental Protection. And in true Gen Z fashion, I quit that perfectly good job without anything else lined up. Every time I run into a family, friend, or acquaintance in my hometown, I always say that I'm 23, have two bachelor's degrees, and I'm living at home with my parents. And that line gets more laughs than I'd like to admit. I tried to get off as much of that caulking as I could, so I didn't prematurely dull my cutter any quicker than necessary when I took it over to the router sled to take it to its final thickness. Speaking of which, we have had some additional supervision from our resident shop dog, Dude. He absolutely hates me turning on the router. I took about four or five passes with the router sled on each side, taking, again, about an eighth of an inch off each time. Um, after I got both sides pretty much completely flat, I took my belt sander and 80 grit paper to go over uh, both sides and remove any of the burn marks and lines that the router may have left. 
and I was trying to be careful to make even passes across the tops so that they would remain perfectly flat. And I went ahead and checked it with a straight edge and made a couple more light passes just to ensure that it was perfectly flat. I then went back to the grinder and the cut saw disc and lightly went over the areas that still had leftover caulking and flex paste. Uh, this time I used the fine disc so the gouges wouldn't be as deep and I wouldn't have so much sanding to do. I know every woodworker that's walked the face of the earth has complained about sanding, but like I 1000% agree, I absolutely hate sanding. I don't even like making the same thing twice, so the fact that I have to sand something through like eight or nine different grits is absolutely terrible. I then alternate between using a reciprocating saw, sanding wheel on a drill, and a oscillating sander, and then eventually a sheet sander when I get to the higher grits. I'll slowly work my way up from 60 to 320, and then on the actual epoxy itself, I'll go all the way up to 2000 grit. As I go up, I pop the grain with a little water bottle full of water in between, and you can really start to see the grain and color come up um, as I work my way up. Cedar is such a soft wood, and it gets a, a pretty bad reputation in the woodworking world. Really, you only ever see it used in fence posts, chests, and closets as liners, and that's kind of due to the oil in the heartwood, which is a natural insect repellent due to the scent. Um, cedar also gets coined by the term aromatic cedar. Uh, the color and image, though, you get from finishing red cedar is definitely unique. I've tried a few different finishes, and the color really changes from finish to finish, from a dull pink to purple and dark red. And uh, the grain of a cookie cut is really interesting, because you almost get this curly texture from compression in some areas. So I think it's really underrated in terms of woodworking. Red cedar is really easy to break, though, uh, especially when it's been dried out. You'll see a lot of checks throughout the wood, and that's also why I went ahead earlier and broke the bigger pieces along those check splits in the wood, just giving it less chance to break and the epoxy to bond in those areas. After I finished sanding, I used mineral spirits to clean up the piece of any remaining dust, and then got some Odie's oil and started my first coat of finish. I ended up using like half a jar of Odie's, and like I said earlier, the epoxy soaking into the cedar, uh, finish does the exact same thing. Uh, almost instantly being taken up into the wood. After applying it and coming back and applying some more, I buffed off all the excess, of which there was very little, and applied my second coat 24 hours later, and then buffed that out again and let it cure for three more days. I have used uh, boiled linseed oil before with a protective coat of poly and tongue oil and a couple others, but uh, the linseed oil and usually all penetrating oils definitely yellow the sapwood and I am absolutely terrible at applying poly. It always looks awful after I try and finish it. So I've kind of started experimenting with wax finishes and I do like them a lot better. It's much easier to get a good even flat finish. Uh, it also gives it better protection from moisture which I was worried about as this will be a well used coffee table. Odie's also seems to give it uh, probably the closest I've seen to the original color once you cut it. And as soon as cedar sets out for any bit of time, it oxidizes and then dulls immediately. So I, I thought this was probably a good balance in between the colors. It wasn't such a dark red, and then it also wasn't a more dull pink like I've seen before. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I ended up just getting some regular black satin hairpin legs and used that as my base. When mounting them, I usually will drill out holes and do inserts so you can bolt and take the legs off for shipping. But because Hallie was gracious enough to come pick it up, I decided just to use the screws it came with. I just made sure to space them pretty evenly and make sure the mounting plate didn't overlap into the clear epoxy because it would look pretty terrible if you could see that black plate through the clear epoxy. The table ended up being just over 2 inches thick and 36 inches across. I gave it a quick wipe down and finished it up. Turned out really awesome. Took it inside for a couple of product photos and couldn't be more thrilled with it, honestly. And more importantly, I think Hallie was really happy with it.
in exchange for the table, I ended up getting a bottle of uh, Woodford bourbon. So pretty good trade. So speaking of which, I've got a couple of similar items for sale on my Etsy, and I've listed the link in my description below. I've also listed all the tools and supplies that I used in my video. So if any of you all want to do something similar to my table, I've also got six more cookies that came out of that exact same tree. They're dried, flattened, and tops are sanded to 80 grit. Uh, I also have some finished cedar projects too, another coffee table, and a different piece that I turned into wall art, all with free shipping in the lower 48. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Feel free to hit the subscribe button and like my video, or don't if you didn't like it. Um, <laughs> drop a comment too. Let me know if you've had any ugly duckling projects that have turned into something really beautiful or interesting. Thanks everyone for watching. I should be coming out with weekly shenanigans, so I'll see you all back in a few.